your will. Beloved, we are continuing the part number two of pleasing God. Pleasing God. To please God means to please God means to make God happy. To do things that God likes. To do things 
that bring happiness and gladness in the hearts of God. In John Gospel, the chapter number 17, John Gospel chapter 17, Verse number 17. 17, 17. 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me unto the world, even as, even so have I also sent them into the world. And to the sick, I sanctify myself. To the sick, I sanctify myself. That they also might be sanctified through the truth. Jesus Christ reveals the mind, the plans, and the purpose of God. He reveals the requirements of God at this time. Right from the beginning of the creation, this has been the models of God. Any person that walk with God, God require his image. Any person that moves with God, God desire his image in that person. Yesterday we spoke about the image and the likeness. The resemblance. In physically, mentally, psychologically. The resemblance. Jesus Christ is that God. That requires that resemblance. Today we want to talk about to please God. I must know. What God wants me to be. What he wants me to be. Jesus in his latter days. After his resurrection. Started speaking to the father. And he wanted. The father to do exactly what he wants on earth. To please somebody. You need to know the requirements and the way to please the person. You must have some basis. As you and me are aware. In the Garden of Eden, God gave his requirements to Adam and Eve. The requirement was, they are not to eat the forbidden fruits. When the Lord met Abraham, he told him to move away from his kindred and go into a place where Abraham will engage him, the Lord God. In any dispensation, or any person that have worked with the Lord, the Lord will give the person his requirement. Then the Lord told Abraham, I am the Lord your God. Walk before me and be blameless. Walk before me and be blameless. Why should God demand that? Because God said, Before you can please me, you must be like me. You must be like me. So anyone that wants to work with God, anyone that wants to please God, must be in the position where he would daily portray the image of God. Where he would daily portray or where his end the pursuits of that person's 
must come to the point where all that the person desires is to become more like God. Becoming like God. Remaining in Him, abiding in Him, and becoming like Him. So in the Old Testament, the Lord gave His laws. The Lord gave His laws, which we also call the commandments. He gave His law to the children of Israel. And as we all are aware, the laws of God are the fingerprints of God. The fingerprints of God, the blueprints of God, that reveals who God is and what God wants us to be. Whenever God speaks, it becomes a law. Whenever God speaks, it becomes a law. Why is God so interested about his laws? Without the law, there is no disobedience. So God commanded his law to abide in us. God commanded his law to train us. God commanded his law to govern us. Now we will have no excuse. Now we will have no excuse. So whenever God appears and he is living man, he leaves man with his laws. So any person that wants to be part of an institution, that person should be governed by the law of the institution. When God created us, he created us in the midst of his word. Now his word reveal his purpose. His purpose show us his mandates. In the Exodus, where the children of Israel, where God first of all found a family, he established a family and gave them his law. Generally, he gave that law which we all know as the Ten Commandments. God gave them. God gave them. In the midst of giving his commandments to humanity, man was transgressing. God couldn't destroy them because he had not given them his laws. The day God gave his law that day. He sought for a way to destroy man. Why? Because where there is no law, there is no disobedience. Where there is no law, there is no disobedience. So God could not kill the children of Israel that they have violated his law. So right from the time of the formation of the nation is right. So the time Moses went into his presence and took his commandment. God could not destroy the children of Israel. Chapter number 34. And the Lord said unto Moses, Exodus 34. Verse 1, And the Lord said unto Moses, Heal thee two tablets of stone like unto the first, and I will write upon the tablet the word that we that were in the first tablets, which thou breakest. And be ready in the morning, and come up in the morning unto Mount Sinai. Present thyself there to me in the top of the mount. And no man shall come up with thee, neither let any man be seen throughout all the mount. Neither let the flocks 
or had feet before that man, mount. And he hewed two tablets of stone like unto the first. And Moses rose up early in the morning and went up into the Mount Sinai. And the Lord had commanded him and took in his hand the two tablets of stone. Verse 5. And the Lord descended into the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord. The Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering, abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for a thousand, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. And that will be no means clear the guilt, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, and upon the children, children, and unto the third, to the fourth generation. Verse 8, And Moses made haste, and bowed his head towards the earth, and worshipped him. God revealed himself to Moses in a very profound way. Now when God revealed himself to Moses, all that Moses saw is that no, I need to bow before this God and worship him. A desire came upon Moses to bow before God, whilst God was revealing his identity, revealing his plans. This alone is enough. I am the Lord your God, the creator of the universe. I am gracious and I'm merciful. I suffer long because of the abundance of my goodness and my truths. I endure much with humanity. I desire keeping mercy upon thousands, forgiving the iniquity of their transgressions, their sins. However, if a person turn away my, from my laws, I will punish that person, even to the fourth generation. Now will continue to revisit the sin of their forefathers. Now will continue to live according to the sin of their forefathers. He is very gracious God. But don't play up. Don't trade. Don't play with his mercy. Because his mercy shall endure forever. However, we must be very careful. So basically the Lord revealed himself to Moses. Showed him what he wants his children to do. And what he doesn't want them to do. So as we all are aware. He showed Moses his laws and revealed his mind unto Moses. And from that day, from that day, after the children of Israel had received the laws of God, that was the beginning that God started revealing how he deals with the wicked. How he deals with the wicked. The lawbreakers and people who don't want to abide. People who don't want to become like him. The rebellious. God hates them. God hates them. Why did God start destroying the children of Israel after he has given them his laws? Because what man ought to become if man refuse? Is willful disobedience towards God. Ladies and gentlemen, King David loved God after he has studied the law of God. And in Psalm 119, verse 97, the psalm writer said, Oh, how I love thy law. All day long I meditate on it. A person that fears God, 
when it comes to God, the only thing that he asks, let me know your statutes. Let me know your requirements. Reveal them to me and I may love them. Ladies and gentlemen, these laws that God gave to the Moses was not meant was not meant to save them because it couldn't save them but to show them their needs to be saved the reason why God gave this law to them was that they would know that no we can't please this God so we must be very careful and humble ourselves before him God give us law not because that we can fulfill them but he want to reveal the limit ability in us the strong wild desire in us inclined to do our own will his laws are not given to man to save us only the grace can save us because the laws are so difficult everything that god said we shouldn't do that is what we desire he gave us the law that will govern our civil life so we have the civil law he gave us a law that will govern our moral life to show who he is and what he is to us. He gave us a law to preserve us in his perfect will. We call it ceremonial laws. How they should kill animals to sanctify their sin. Apostle Paul said that the law had become our guardian until Christ came. In Galatians chapter, 20, chapter 3 verse 24, the law became our school teacher until grace came and took over. That is why he, Apostle Paul said in Titus chapter number 2, when he started talking about the grace of God has appeared unto man, teaching man to walk in the counsel of God. What the law could not do, the grace took over. Does it mean that the law of God was not necessary to us? It preserved us, it modeled us until Jesus came and prayed this prayer as we read in john chapter 17 sanctify them O god by the truth for thy law is true the law of god could not sanctify man the moral law ceremonial law and the civil war law could not sanctify man it did it best but man was not in the position to work with god and well manner that the, world, the laws of God could help man. Men work in their own way, desire their sinful deeds. And every now and then man fell short into the glory of God. Ladies and gentlemen, if we want to please God, we need to come to know his law. And today his law is Jesus Christ. The law that God has given unto man became human being. And the law started working on earth. The law of God is Jesus Christ. He has become the desire of God. Have the entire Bible in your hands. Know everything from head to toe. Observe what is written in there. But without Jesus and without the Holy Spirit, you are a lawbreaker. And you'll be condemned. You'll be condemned. Why? Because he is the righteous judge. He is the righteous judge. And his righteousness condemned every sinner. 
His righteousness condemns every sinner. Understand that. Understand that. God gave them laws. The law of the Sabbath. Which is the ceremonial law. How to keep themselves pure. How to keep themselves holy. And listen to what Jesus said. Now because Jesus was doing these things on the Sabbath. Jewish leaders began to persecute him. Jesus was doing so many things in the Sabbath. And he said I am the law of the Sabbath. I am the owner of the Sabbath. Everything that Jesus told the children of Israel to do in the Old Testament, Jesus now appeared and said, I am the one. I told you how to walk with God and be blameless, but none of you were able to. He healed on the Sabbath day, and they weren't happy. He saved souls. He changed his life on the day that they have held so important. But the person of that day, they ignored him. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand that before you and me can please God, we need to know Jesus Christ. It is not necessary to know entire Bible and not to know Jesus. It is not necessary to go to church and not to know Jesus because there are millions of people in the church today that they don't belong to Jesus. They don't have anything to do with him. I want you to understand there is a big difference between accepting the law of the Bible and accepting Jesus as your only Savior. The law could not save man. Other than that, Jesus wouldn't have come to die on the cross. And when he came and died for us, he established, he established the will of God for us. And therefore, in John chapter number 17, when he was praying for man, sent them, sanctified them. What is sanctification? Sanctification is a process that God, the blood of Jesus, sets on us to qualify us to be holy like God. Can any person be holy? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Sanctification is the cleansing process of God. Unless you live sanctified life, you will never please God. Our brethren Muslims, they do what they call ablution. 24-7 they wash all their body every minute, every second, every day. How many water they need? Thinking that water will sanctify them. I'm learning some places if they don't have water, they can use the soil, the sand, the dust to do the ablution. Is there any place, is there anything that God has given unto man that will sanctify man apart from the blood? John chapter number 13. John chapter number 13. Jesus Christ had entered into the communion with his children. And he wanted to wash the feet of the disciples. And he came to Peter as Jesus took water, put water in the basin. And then started washing the feet of the disciples. Verse 7, Jesus answered and said unto them, John 13, 7, What I am doing now you know not, but you shall know hereafter. 
what I am doing now. Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered them, If I wash not thy feet, you are not part of me. How can I be part of Christ unless he washes me with his blood? Then Peter answered and said unto him, Lord, if that is the case, then wash, wash my entire body. And Jesus said, Pete, he that have already been washed, my word I have taught you. Every, all these three years I have worked with you, my words have washed you. But now it needs the final touches. All that I need to do is to do the final touches. You don't need your entire body to be washed again. Even if I wash your entire body today, you still not be in a position where I want you unless my spirit comes and dwell in you. The word of God, the law of God washes us as water. The blood of Jesus sanctifies us and his Holy Spirit makes us holy. And as much as we are willing to read his word, in as much as we are willing to read his word, his word is the law that prepare us and brings us under his feet to be sanctified. For he know who should betray him, therefore said he, ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garment and was set down again he said unto him know ye what i have done to you ye call me master and lord and he said well for i am you call me master and lord you call me master and lord and indeed you are speaking the truth i am the lord jesus revealed his identity only to the people that come to him those who don't know Jesus I will continue to argue about the way of righteousness. How to please God. You call me master and lord, which I am. Indeed I am. If I then being your lord and your master have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. He came to live. How God wants us to live. He came to live. He lived a holy life. Sanctified life. Pure. Righteous life. And he wants you and me. To do likewise. I have given you an example. I have given you. The way that a father wants you to live. To wash your feet. By living. The life that my father wants. Mm. Verily, verily, I say unto you, A servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than the one sent him. If you know these things, happy are you if you do them. <laughs> happy are you doing the will of God brings God happiness. And it brings us happiness. The psalmist said, The joy of the Lord is my strength. Anything that I will do to make God happy. The reason why you go to church, sister, is not for your happiness, but God's happiness. Jesus said it many times, I have not come to do my own will, but I have come to do my Father's will. Now his joy will remain in me do you want to please god see god know his will and his will is for you to live a sanctified life how can i live the sanctified life his words his laws his decree show me who he is and it directs me into a place where he had designated for himself Beloved, understand this. The standard of God is righteousness. And his righteousness 
makes us to be saved. Unless you and me are willing to pursue his righteous standard. And people find it very difficult. Find it very difficult. But brethren, it is not all that difficult as it is if we are willing. The difficulties in pleasing God is in our desire, in our willingness. Verse 18, I speak not of you all. I know whom I have chosen. I know whom I have chosen. The choices of God is not only coming from God alone, but it comes from us also. Every person is a chosen, is a royal personality that Christ has set for his own glory. I am not doing all this thing for all of you. But let's see the proportionate. He, he chose 12, only one, only one. Meaning that in the desire of God, only one percent is supposed to be destroyed. Only one percent on this earth is supposed to be destroyed. If Satan should get people in hell, they should be just tiny. Have I now chosen you 12? But only one is disqualified. He that eateth with me lifted up his heel against me. Can you eat with the Lord and yet reject him? There are many of us today who are walking with God that we don't know. That we don't have any desire to please him. We don't have any interest to do things that makes him happy. God sometimes play, put us in a place to make us happy and we intend to break his heart. He said, now I told you before it come, that when it come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that received whosoever I send, receive me. And he that received me, receive him that sends me. When Jesus hath that said, he was troubled in his spirit and testified and said, verily, very I say unto you. One of you shall betray me. It shouldn't be you. What does it mean to betray Jesus? To betray Jesus means to renounce, denounce him, that you don't want him to sanctify you. Sanctify them, O Lord. Sanctify them, O Lord. Sanctification. Apostle Paul spoke about sanctification very, very much. Let's go back to the Romans, the chapter number 6. Apostle Paul, help us to understand how it is to live a sanctified life. A sanctified life is a life that has presented to God to know the will of God. But Paul said this, Know ye not that many of you were baptized into Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 6 verse 3. Many of you were baptized into Jesus Christ. Were baptized into his death. Baptism into his death. Meaning becoming part. Therefore we were buried with him. By baptism into death. That like us Christ was raised out from the death by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. When we become saved, when we confess Jesus as our Savior, and we go through water baptism, we start the process of being sanctified, that we washed away the sin physically and spiritually, that the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in us. And causes us to live a newness life that helps us to live to obey the voice of God, the law of God. Do you still have trouble obeying the word of God? You are not sanctified. 
the clear indication that I am living a sanctified life is when I don't have problem by obeying the voice of God. There is nothing in me that rebel against God. Mm. There is nothing. There is nothing. Beloved, when we come to that place, let's jump. He said, or oh, let's let's read something. Therefore, we buried he we buried with him in baptism unto death, like as Christ was raised up from the death by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of the death, we shall also be in the likeness of resurrection. Did you hear that? The likeness, the image. Pursue the image of God. Water baptism, water baptism, the Holy Spirit baptism, bring us into the newness of his personality. His image should be formed in us. Christianity is the pursuit of the image of Christ. The likeness of Christ. The likeness of Christ. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. That the body of sin might be destroyed. The henceforth, we should no longer serve sin. For he that is dead, free from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, died no more. Death has no more dominion over him. When a person decides to receive God and work with God, automatically, he shouldn't be controlled by sin. The power of the blood of Jesus Christ, the power of the blood of Jesus Christ has divine ability and the divine strength with the backing of the Holy Spirit to cause us to live a sanctified life. Sanctification. The blood of Jesus Christ. Beloved, understand this. In as much as we want to please God. In as much as we want to please God, we must walk in sanctification. He wants us. He wants God. He wants God to sanctify us. And therefore he prayed, sanctify them, O Father. Sanctify them. Beloved, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11, Apostle Paul said, But you were washed. You were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the spirit of our God. When we desire his Holy Spirit. When we come before him every day. Wash me. Wash me he will. Wash me he will. In Romans chapter 8 verse 9 to 11. However ye are not of the flesh. But in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. But if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ. He doesn't belong to him. We can only be sanctified. When we invite Jesus into our life and allow his law, his will to rule in our heart. And his law is the word of God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus said the word that I speak, they are spirits. He spoke himself into existence. And everything that was written in the Bible, it was written for this purpose. That we will be sanctified for God. If you are in the church and you are not sanctified, you might be wearing black, black all the time, but yes, your spirit is sanctified. You might be wearing white from head to toe, yet you are so dirty, so impure. Why? Because his word has no place in your heart. His spirit is not ruling in your heart. If Christ is in you through the body of death because of sin, yet the spirit is alive because of righteousness. 
but if the spirit of him who raised Christ from the dead live in your mortal body, he that raised Jesus Christ from the dead shall quicken your physical body and establish your spiritual soul to live in the life which is well pleasing unto God. Ladies and gentlemen, the Lord wants us to be sanctified. It is not necessary to know all the commandments of God by heart, yet you are not sanctified. The grace of God that brings salvation and that has appeared unto all men teaches and govern, guides and bring us into a place where we will be sanctified. Beloved, sanctification, sanctification is something that Jesus came for. He says, sanctify them, O Lord. Set them apart. Set them apart. Apostle Paul spoke about this in quite very often in Romans chapter 12, which is very famous scripture. Say, present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. Living acceptable life. My body should be engaged. My body should be presented as a means that God will use to express his kindness. The Lord wants you and me to live a life. The Lord wants you and me to live a life which is well pleasing and belonging to Him. Living a sanctified life simply means when all your all becomes God. There is nothing in you that belongs to you again. You have nothing of your own. You surrounded your will, your desire, your feelings, your emotion to God. That there is no second, there is no minute that doesn't belong to God in your life. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 to 14, Apostle Paul, in him you also, after listening to the message of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, having also believed, you were sealed in him. This gospel that we preach, this gospel that tells you to turn away from wickedness, turn away from sin, turn away from worldliness, turn away from everything that Satan is putting on you. Remove them out of your life. When we believe it, we receive the Holy Spirit that seal us. The gospel must be heard. The law of God is the gospel. Jesus came to demonstrate the law of God in all these three and have you heard that he lived on earth? Every word that he said was according to the law that he gave to the children of Israel. So Jesus became our law. And every word that he said is part of the laws of God. We call it the gospel of salvation. He no longer called it the law of God. He called it the gospel of salvation. Apostle Paul said, when you believe it, you were sealed. And he said that with his Holy Spirit that gave us the promises because he was the spirit of promise. Jesus, when he was about to depart, said, I will give you another promise. And that promise is when the Holy Spirit comes, he will bring you to the Father. Ladies and gentlemen, the Holy Spirit grants us inheritance in the Lord. His presence in your life. The Lord grant us that we have inheritance in the Lord. Why? Because he teaches us the ways to please God. He helps us to prepare us for eternity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3, 13, Apostle Paul said, We should always give thanks to God for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord Jesus Christ. Because God has chosen you from the beginning for salvation through sanctification by the spirit and faith in the truth. Now we are adding another one, faith in the truth. Tomorrow we will go deeper as we draw closer. You want to please God. You want to know God. I know you want. Everything that you are doing, saying that you want to know God. You want to please God. Know his will. 
when the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in us, he established what we call faith. Faith. Trust, confidence. Trust and confidence in the word of God. That the word, when I put in my heart, sin will be far away from me. When I allow the word, the law of God, the word of God, the law of God to dwell inside of me. When I allow the law of God to detect my feeling, my emotion, my desire. When I allow the law of God to direct me to where God wants me to be. Sin will be far away from me. Jesus said in John chapter number 14, the verse number 30, 31. He said, the prince of this world is coming, but he had nothing in me. I have only the word of God. I have only the will of God in my heart. And sick can never get hold of me. Do you want to please God? Sick is law. His law is Jesus Christ. Oh, thou shall not, thou shall not, thou shall not, thou shall not. They are all pointing Jesus to us. First Peter chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who were raised as aliens, scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and uh, Bithynia, who are chosen according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father, by sanctifying the work of the Spirit to obey Jesus Christ and be sprinkled with his blood. May grace and peace be upon you in the fullness, in the full measure. We have been chosen. There is a church in Nigeria called Chosen. <laughs> if you are a member of that church, pray and ask God, indeed, am I chosen? If I am chosen, why am I not talking to Jesus Christ, but I talk to the God of Chosen? Any time that a certain God presents himself that he is God. Any time that a certain image presents himself that he is your God. Question him. I want to speak to Jesus Christ. Because he is my sanctifier. If the God of your servant is not Jesus Christ. Don't serve the God of Gabriel. I don't have any God. My God is Jesus Christ. Mention his name and serve him. And when we mention him in truthly, the Bible said that he comes with his Holy Spirit. He sanctify me and set me aside. He sprinkled his blood over me. When I become obedient, recently one of our sisters went through water baptism. And after she had done everything, God, the Holy Ghost baptism, studying the word of God, done everything. Says, hey, brother, can you take me through water baptism? It is necessary. She asked me, is it necessary? I said, oh, yes. Brother Paul spoke about that in Romans chapter 6 very, very much. That our sanctification is through the water baptism and the Holy Spirit baptism and the word of God. Water, the Holy Spirit, and the word. These three sanctify us. She said, I have all of them, but I don't have the water baptism. Would you want to baptize me? I said, of course. We went through the process. And she started crying. I feel like a baby. I feel like I'm washed. I feel like I'm clean. I feel now I feel whole. You don't know. You don't know. After a day's hard labor, the one thing that causes your flesh to relax much is when you go through the shower and shower yourself. Shower yourself, shower yourself. When you finish, just go and lie down to rest the body. There is nothing refreshment like that. Today there was, I was watching something on Facebook in the morning at workplace. About six, seven men have held a man, one in the leg, one in the arm, one in the arm here. And every one, there were about three, 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 three times four, 12 people. And they were pouring water. They were literally using this, um, uh, what they call it, this power. This uh, water that brings enough power. I mean, water holds by the one with the with machine, pumping machine. They spread us all. Ah, what is going on? They watered and watered and watered and watered. They removed something. So I didn't see anything. So what is happening? The communication wasn't all that strong. And uh, I eventually, I was wondering what is happening. And I saw that they were using soap and sponge 
just to really to scoop everything out of his skin. And when I finished, I said, what is all this thing about? They let him on the floor. I don't know how many gallons or how many barrels of water they needed to wash this proud person. And under title was, this is what happened. If a person have refused to bath for years, and the neighbors want you to bath. <laughs> Some of us, that is how the law and the word of God does to us. Today, I want to lead you into that place of his cleansing blood to wash you. I have a brother in Germany, a Christian brother, that he was living every kind of life. And the day he accepted Jesus Christ and started seeking God, angels of heaven came, put him in his bath. In his bath, he didn't go to the swimming pool. There are so many of you who speak against uh, baptizing people in a bath. Ladies and gentlemen, a spiritual thing is not a physical thing. So the brother said the angels put him in his own bath and they pour, pour water on him and they started, they started washing him. They really cleaned him in his bath. Spiritually, and the brother felt it physically that the angel came down from heaven and washed him. Those angels that are still washing are around this afternoon to wash you. I don't know how far you have been. My time is up. I don't know how far you have gone. I don't know how far you have been, but I'm here to tell you my Savior is still washing his children. He's still bringing his people into a place where they can be washed. What can wash my sins away? Nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. When his word washes your mind, first of all, your mind needs to be washed. The mind needs to be washed. That's why Brother Paul said, renew your mind by the mercies of God. The day we accept his ways and accept his plans for us, his word begin to cleanse our thoughts from all filthy things, from our conscious states, and present us to him in where man that will be worthy. After our mind is washed, then he'll come to our body. And the body that is washed, that body doesn't need makeup. That body doesn't need eyelash. That body doesn't need lipstick. That body doesn't need chain. That body doesn't need any handband. You don't need it because they are dead. They defiles your human body. Do you want to be washed? I present this Jesus to you. Bring your heart before him and allow him to wash you and cleanse you. And make you whiter than the snow. He desires to bring you to that. He is able. If today you can invite him into your life. If you can tell him to come and wash you and sanctify you by his word, he is willing to do that. You can't please God. To please God means you can't have what he has for you. To please God means you can't become what he wants you to be unless you have Jesus in your heart. You might be a Muslim. I don't believe in Jesus. Sir, there is no way you can please God. Pray this prayer after me if you are desiring to please him. Say, Jesus. I believe you're the son of God. I believe you died for my sins. Nothing can wash away my sins except your blood. I believe that your blood is able to wash me. I present my life to you, O God. Search me. Any area of my life that looks filthy, wash me by your blood. Wash me by your blood. Wash me by your blood. Sanctify me, O God. Sanctify me, O God. This is in the name of Jesus, he is washing you. Say, wash my brain, wash my conscience from filthy things, from worldliness. And let me fashion according to your will. Let me present myself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto your will. I want to please you, God. Talk to God. Talk to God. That cleanse me, O oh God. Set me aside. I have lived with all kinds of religious mentality. I've contaminated myself. You know, you know, you feel you're filthy before God. You are vile. You are vile. You know you are not pure. You know that when you stand before God, something is wrong. I seem to wash me. I seem to wash you. Say, wash me, O oh God. Cleanse my heart. Cleanse my mind. Cleanse my thoughts. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. Your children say they don't want to be washed. Your children say they don't want to be sanctified. They want to be purified. 
sanctify them by this word of God. Because the master that you have given to us has power to wash and to cleanse. I redeem your soul from the power of darkness. I remove every mark and every trait of demonic and satanic marks on your skin. In the name of Jesus Christ, may the refreshment of God come upon your spirit. May you begin to live in accordance with his will. In Jesus' name. Beloved, if you have prayed that prayer, I want to encourage you to seek for a Bible-based church. Not miracle church, Bible-based church. Pastors like Brother Gabriel that will teach you how to please God. I want to know him and I want to please him. And everything I'm teaching you, I learn it and I want to live like that. That's why I'm telling you, come along and let us go. So you can join me 24-7 on Facebook, on YouTube, the same name. One hour sap, the same name. Gabriel Adadi or Pastor Gabriel or Love is my wife's name. So we use these two names to declare the mandate and the purpose of God to the world. Join me 24-7 on my daily broadcast every day, 24-7. It is running. It's my online radio that will help you to develop your salvation and your preparation for heaven. Join me. It's called End Time Holiness Radio UK. Holiness Radio or End Time Radio UK. When you Google it, you'll be logged into or you'll be taught how to listen to this radio and your life will never be the same again if you watch me on facebook why don't you become a friend a friend and a companion a brother that want to make heaven together join me 24 7 on these networks and your life will never we will pray together we study the word of god together i can't pray for you because i don't know how to pray for people but i pray with people that is what we do we study the word of god and we pray together and when the word of god becomes so rich in our spirit Nothing will go withhold from us. Stop praying for things and start praying for change. When your heart is changed, everything that God has become yours. Father, your truth has been taught. I declare your people sanctified by your word. Your word is powerful. Sanctify them, O oh God, for this truth. For the message that you have given to us is truth. In Jesus' name, amen.